I'm Chauncey Glover and now on the evening news preparing for another round of severe weather after strong storms moved through earlier today. A viewer sent us this video here of a hailstorm there in Damon, which is in Brazoria County. There was also a tornado warning issued after two o'clock in Fort Bend County, but there are still no reports on if a funnel cloud ever actually touched the ground there. And right now, Southeast Texas is in the clear after severe storms blew through a few hours ago. Now we're looking ahead to the overnight hours when a front is set to move in, along with the threat of more severe weather. Let's get right over to Chief Meteorologist Travis Herzog for a timeline on tonight's storms. We are carefully monitoring some storms developing in Oklahoma that will sweep through the eastern half of Texas while most of us are asleep, but you might wake up to the sound of thunder. There's already some tornado and severe thunderstorm watches on this line as it races its way through Oklahoma. That line doesn't reach southeast Texas until after midnight and probably not getting to Houston until closer to five, six o'clock in the morning. So here's future track. It shows that line into our northern counties around two, three o'clock in the morning. As we get towards 5 a.m., that line is right along the I-10 corridor rolling through Houston and potentially packing some severe gusty winds. That will be the primary threat posed by these storms is the potential for some widespread damaging wind gusts, though we can't rule out some hail nor a brief isolated tornado in addition to heavy rain and lightning as well. So these storms rush, racing their way southward by six o'clock in the morning. They are pushing through Galveston into the Gulf of Mexico and then things are going to clear out rather nicely. So we have a high chance of rain. Yes, at 80% for the morning hours, but as we get into the afternoon, things are looking really good with the sunshine returning and that humidity. It will be dropping and that sets the stage for some great weather on Thursday and Friday. So make sure before you go to bed tonight that you've got that ABC 13 Houston News app installed on your phone with the push alerts and notifications. In case there is a warning, you'll get notified and then you want to tune in the TV to meteorologist Alita Loresca. She will have the latest on those storms uh, on the morning news. So uh, great weather once the storm threat passes by the weekend it just gets hot and sticky with highs around 90 the heat index Monday close to 100 a little preview of the summer heat to come and it really won't be until about a week from now that we have another opportunity for storms a very similar weather system to the one that just passed through today and will blow in tonight so that could again happen about a week from now and rest assured our weather team will be watching those storms carefully for you throughout the night. Travis, thanks. Another update from city and county leaders as the state of Texas prepares to reopen on Friday. Today, we learned more about new testing sites in Harris County as more cases of COVID-19 were reported today. ABC 13's Micah Hatfield is following the very latest on the response. The plan is more about going on the offense against the virus and containing it. It's about finding who's been in contact with someone that tested positive, getting them tested and having them self isolate. It will ultimately keep us from having to shut down businesses again. The biggest difference is Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo told ABC 13 today in a one on one interview that we're finally to a point where we can contain the virus. At first, all we could do was shut down businesses and tell people to stay at home. Although we aren't in the situation that Judge Hidalgo would like to be in when we start reopening our economy, but the county has launched a plan to attack the virus from three angles testing, tracing and treating for every positive coronavirus case. The county anticipates that person has been in contact with 20 people who will need to get tested and self isolate. So they're launching a 300 person tracing team to find those 20 people for each of the positive cases. Today during commissioner's court, the first 43 positions were approved for that team, mainly the supervisors. Judge Hidalgo says the county will assess the cost of the team but they hope to be reimbursed by the federal government. But to make the plan work with our current resources, Judge Hidalgo says we need to stay under 100 new cases every day. Today we had 98. We're waiting to see whether that was an outlier or what, uh, because certainly that's concerning. It had been a bit lower the past few days where it's like, okay, we can handle that. But that's why we do depend on folks coming forward who think they may have the virus or who may be sick, because that is our initial case that we can then fan out and trace. Judge Hidalgo says that they can have cautious optimism about this plan that they're putting forward because a lot of it depends on factors outside of their control, including what you do when you go out uh, to these businesses that are starting to reopen. She says it also depends on if the governor watches the case count and adjusts the reopening plan accordingly. Near downtown, Micah Hatfield, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. 
Micah, thanks. Now to the reopening of Texas. On Friday, Texans will be allowed to get back to work. Restaurants, retailers, malls, and movie theaters can reopen at 25% capacity. Now, state officials say the reopening will happen in phases. ABC 13's Marla Carter shows us what the reopening will look like and how businesses are starting to prepare. If you do go to a restaurant on Friday or over the weekend, you will notice some changes. For example, social distancing must be in place. You also likely won't see ketchup bottles on the table and you can't reuse menus. You should feel comfortable to come into the Cleburne and sit down and enjoy your meal like you did in the old days. Cleburne Cafeteria has made signs, even came up with a slogan, something you'd see for a grand opening. But this isn't that. It's almost like opening the store for the first time again, a grand reopening, if you will. They're all geared up for Friday's reopening and are ready to follow the guidelines that come with it. They've made a sign for that, too. We're going to ask if we can take their temperature. Uh, we're going to offer, uh, maintain, obviously, the six feet social distancing with both our tables and throughout the cafeteria. They have blocked off certain tables to ensure social distancing and are prepared to portion out condiments, another requirement. It'll just be good to see everybody again coming in and dining in and just kind of back to pre-COVID normal. In addition to restaurants, movie theaters can open as well, but at least one is an opening on Friday. Alamo Draft House. They sent a statement saying in part, opening safely is a very complex project that involves countless new procedures and equipment, all of which require extensive training. This is something we cannot and will not do casually or quickly. We will not be opening this weekend. As to whether the state is ready to reopen, a member of the governor's strike force says gradually we are. We have to get people back to work. Uh, there isn't enough money uh, in our in our economy to to be able to you know, sustain uh, people and, and help. So we need to get our economy going again. Cleburne's cafeteria is ready for that too. Marla Carter, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Marla, thanks. And even though the state reopens this Friday, many people have experienced loss during this crisis, whether it's a loved one, a job, or being isolated from your family. ABC 13's Roxy Bustamante with more on calming fears and anxiety through this very difficult time. Tonight, I spoke with Ty David Lerman, a local psychotherapist, who says what many people are experiencing right now, it's grief. This has really given us an opportunity to reassess those things and ask, is this what I, the life I want for myself? Ty David Lerman with TDL Counseling says as we re-enter into the workforce, many people may start to realize some things will not be the same. But we're all going through those stages of anger and denial and we're, in, uh, and we're experiencing depression as we're going through this. And it's all grief, whether it's grief from literal loss, if you've known someone who's passed away, or it is grief about our life, the lifestyle that we have lost. He says when you start to feel overwhelmed and can't seem to cope with the stress and anxiety, it's time to reach out for help. Where we can't control it, we don't, we feel like we're out of control or this is too much for us to handle. That's where we cross into a clinical diagnosis or a clinical uh, example of what anxiety would be and when we should probably reach out for, for to see a therapist. He says the help is out there, whether it's a therapist or counselor within your network or an anonymous hotline. It's important to remember you're not alone. We're all feeling isolated and that physical touch from other people, physical affection. Um, we're missing that and our entire society is, is having an impact. Roxy Bustamante, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Well, local Houston rapper Trey The Truth is known for giving back every chance he can. Well, today he surprised nurses at Houston Methodist Hospital with a what did he surprise him with? I guess this is these bags right here uh, that he surprised him with to tell them thank you for all of their hard work that they're doing. He handed out over 200 salads to the medical staff there who were happy with his presence and happy for this great meal. He also partnered up with HEB and called 20 senior citizens to let them know they won a $100 gift card. Keep up the great work there. Well, finding a new path, losing your job can be hard enough, but one woman used this setback to launch a brand new career. ABC 13's Tom Abrams has her story. Two million Texans have filed for unemployment since the onset of COVID-19. Even more than that have lost their jobs, and many of them in the very hard-hit energy industry. Well, we met one person who lost her job in that industry, but instead of trying to get back in, she started a novel pursuit. After 32 years at the same seismic data company, Dean Gremmel lost her job this month. I shed a lot of tears. 
I ate a lot of chocolate ice cream, <laughs> ate a lot of cake, and I went through a lot of emotions. A casualty of the pandemic and weak energy market, she weathered other downturns, not this one. It was always in the back of my mind, being laid off, and I just tried to push it away, but it finally uh, came to fruition two weeks ago. She is her family's sole provider, but rather than try to get back in, she's trying something different. A part-time writer before the pandemic and author of 12 books, she's now a full-time novelist. She writes four to five pages a day now, publishing under the pen names Chris Pike and Blake O'Connor in different genres, including, of all things, post-apocalyptic fiction. Living the, the results of the pandemic is completely different than, than writing about it, the things that we, I don't even uh, think about. She has renewed purpose and discipline, though, goals in mind. And for others who lost their jobs amidst this crisis, she has advice. I experienced a lot of anger, and I know that if anger channeled correctly, you can do great things, you can accomplish a lot, and that's, that's what I'm doing right now. Now, we know so many of you are out of work, looking for jobs, and if you need help, we have a lot of resources here at our website at abc13.com. Reporting tonight from downtown Houston, Tom Abrams, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Tom, thanks. And let's end with some good news tonight about our friend and ABC 13 anchor emeritus Dave Ward. All of your prayers and well wishes. Well, they're working, friends. Doctors say uh, Dave is expected to make a full recovery from a serious infection. He's expected to be out of the ICU sometime soon. Laura Ward says Dave loves Houston and the city, of course, loves him back. She says she wants everyone to know how much all of the love means to them. Certainly so. Well, thanks for getting us caught up or letting us get you caught up on the evening news. Be sure to join us tonight at 10 on ABC 13. Have a great night, friends. Stay safe.